Greetings and salutations everyone. What I'll be doing here is um, picking up where we left off uh, last time. We're going to plug our shift register pins into our microcontroller and then we're going to take a microphone and plug that to our into our controller. But first things first, I'm not going to work on this right away. Now typically and this is something you probably should do, is you'd want to design a little audio amplifier. It's like, uh, like this one. So if you designed that, then you'd simply plug that into it. If you bought a, a female adapter for this, you could plug her right in, right? But I'm going to go ahead and just um, try wiring this up directly, see what voltage level I get out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire it up a little differently, kind of like this. And so for that, I'm going to need... Oh. Alright, so you'll notice here that it's a uh, plug. I'm going to be hooking it into pinouts here and it doesn't fit. Ugh, I've tried. So I'm going to cut her. And then we're going to tin it. Uh, it's not that hard. It's not that scary. Um, I typically like to leave a little bit of slack in case I ever want to, to use this plug ever again. Yeah, so typically there's a little powder on these things. So I'm going to have to try my darndest to get rid of it. Oh, forgot how difficult audio wires were. Well, another thing you can do, get these, one of these little kits here. Behold the male pinouts on there. You at least had to do the burning out to get the, uh, to get the, the uh, protective coating off of there. Um, so it will make electrical connection, but we're going to test that out in a little bit here. So let's give that a go. So now, there, I have turned them into perfect, usable creations. I'm going to go ahead and pretend that blue is the negative and the copper is the positive supply. Alright, so I'm not getting any meaningful readings, so obviously I did something wrong. It may be that the uh, connections on here weren't that great, um, or perhaps I will need that audio amplifier. Okay, <clears throat> we're back. So I went out and got some of uh, uh, the components. But one of the dangers of buying, so what I needed was that uh, integrated circuit to, uh, to better control the, the audio. And while I was messing with that audio, I, I, we saw that that mic wasn't that great. So I went ahead and got this really teeny tiny guy. Really tiny, it's really tiny one. So I got those, those are the essentials, and um, another essential were, the, were some caps, and I couldn't pass up a capacitor kit. Ho oh, ho ho ho. Haven't owned one of these since school. <laughs> Didn't need these, but uh, got them anyways. Just a, a ton of variable potentiometers. Um, oh, and then I saw this guy, a, uh, which is the same microcontroller as, as this, this Uno right here. 
my original plan was to make a board and then snap one of those guys on there. But then I remembered they make the surface mount version of them, so I looked it up, and, and now I don't really even have to do much. It's got everything on there for me. Um, then I went ahead and got those 180 ohms that I spec'd out. And then some voltage regulators, uh, just in case, you, you never know. And uh, Oh yeah, and then I also went ahead and threw on my... Uh, some some crystals just cause uh, you know it was there it was on that line and then ooh I found a package set of uh, RGB LEDs but uh, as you can see that's the danger of uh, of getting of ordering the parts you, you end up buying buying a ton of stuff I kind of needed most of them so even with all that I can uh, can get started here and finally uh, get back to the task at hand. All right, so uh, while I waited for my parts, I went ahead and uh, designed the circuit, as you can see here. Printed it out. So now I'll uh, sit back and uh, wire it up. Okay, so now we're going to power it up. I'm uh, plugging it in here. Giving it 5 volts. Like we've always done. Give it to the whole circuit. So power everything up. And uh, before I do that, I want to see my output from my two leads that I made on the on the diagram. We had the A0 and ground. Uh, the A0 comes right off the negative side of the cap and the ground is, is just the common uh, wire there. So, that part will be easy. I'm just going to have these there. I don't know. There we go. You guys can take a look. should see an analog signal coming through. First, let's power it up. Put five volts in. Okay. There we go. Let's see if we get anything. Four volts. That's something. With the mic in. So let's see if that guy's doing anything. Nope, I don't think that's hooked in. <laughs> uh, so, since the leads are so teeny, so gosh darn teeny, oop, that's not going to focus. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and solder on some leads to it. Maybe that'll help, huh? Ooh. All right, now that I got some leads on there, try this again. Oops. <laughs> that fell off. Having a little bit of difficulties. Why don't I just try this bad boy? Uh, maybe I'll resolder that one. Luckily, I've got more of those. I do kind of feel it go in, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it's in there it's just uh, it's not doing what I think it should do so I may have it to where not wired in right um, but that's impossible right <laughs> now it's at 4.5 again and I tap it it adjusts it slightly let's see what happens changing my point something I should really be seeing a voltage change is what is what I'm looking for the glories of troubleshooting. Oh, 
I am just having such a difficult day here. I may have that wired in wrong or something. All this just to send a voice signal to our darn Arduino. Alright, so I looked at it and uh, hopefully as you can see now it's the it's kind of changing a little bit when I talk dips down by 0.3 volts there let's actually talk into it hello there, see we dip down to 1.9 we're dipping around 1 2 1 2 so that's the that's what we're looking for we're looking for that minor change this isn't going to be able to read it as well but we will see it fluctuate like that and that's what we're looking for so what the problem was I was dicking around with it it was wired up properly. One of the chips was bad. So I was messing around with it, messing around with it, and uh, it was just it was just locking at that four volts. And eventually I, I troubleshot down to a point where I actually pulled the wire coming off of the potentiometer, which is supposed to be the, the input to the to the chip on the pin three as your input. You power up the chip. You put pin three, your your voltage level, which all it all it sees is a little voltage level, which is, is from this guy. You send that through, and all it's supposed to do is amplify it, and this wasn't doing it. <laughs> and I even tried varying another voltage source on there, and it it sent it sent a constant. Oh, so that that's what we were seeing before. So uh, I mean that's that can happen. The whole thing you you do it around could be bad. That's why you buy a couple of them. So uh, to to note that this is bad you typically bend these in and I know it's bad because I just <laughs> tried it out and uh, w when you do do projects <clears throat> get uh, when, when you actually put them on a board and you make your projects get get one of these guys so that way you didn't solder your chip in there that way you can pull it out and uh, and put another one in if you suspect that that's a culprit because the rest of these are, are more or less passive they're all passive except for that component and your mic that guy was doing fine because as I said you troubleshoot all the way down to uh, where you can see the light voltage difference going in you read it going into the chip and if nothing comes out of the chip then it's the chip <laughs> either have the chip wired in wrong or the chip itself is bad. Um, the next thing we'll do is uh, is sit down. You'll notice I didn't plug these in properly. The schematic shows one of them tied to the other. Um, just that's pretty easy. I'll just I'll just do that later. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is is the code side. So you after you do that, it'll take up three pins on the microcontroller. Then take where we're measuring our voltage and tap that off and run it into here. As always, we're uh, here in Google, so uh, let's look up matrix LED control. Well, we always knew that was an option, didn't we? Hook it directly up. But I decided to use a shift register. Like this. Let's try shift register control Arduino. Ooh, shifting out the 595 chip. Text. I kind of scroll. Oh, it looks familiar, doesn't it? Ooh, okay, so I could kind of look at this like row and column. So they're doing the two. I had the idea of running the two, and it looks like we're shifting those. Looks like they're connecting them, right? Um. All right, yeah, this is fairly similar. There's really only one way to wire these guys up in conjunction. It's on the data sheet. So let's go ahead and do the dual one. We'll skip that top one they had on the top there. So also just so you know, the Arduino.cc is a great resource for those of you that didn't already know that. I'm sure a lot of you did, but uh, I don't like to sift through websites because search engines do a way better job of it um let's see here code sample two two i'm, I'm not really going to do a code example type thing i mean you, 
this is something you're gonna have to figure out on your own J just know that there's resources available I mean me personally even professionally I don't design anything from scratch I don't like go to work and crack open a textbook and start typing up my stuff from there I, I asked did anybody do anything before uh, so I get that and and I run with that first so th the lesson of this is just look around and, and you're probably going to bite into a few bad apples here and there. there someone's going to do it in a way that, that was really difficult but you didn't know any better but you followed along anyways but you know you, you gotta kiss a few frogs till you find your prince you know what I'm saying gotta lick a few toads anyways I'm gonna copy these down and sometimes on their site they have that code copy and if they don't big whoop just highlight just highlight them all and copy. Bam! Oh, look at that. Now I got the code. All right, so here is what that uh, shift out to underscore two code does. You could adjust the time and make it go fast, just like this. That's with uh, 100 milliseconds instead of one second. Uh, this is what that matrix two underscore three does thought I remember seeing that they had one of those uh, examples maybe for analog ins here I'm gonna use this as a base like I said I don't really start from scratch so I'm, I'm at least gonna use this the whole init a0 rename some stuff obviously not use their stupid default indicator LED but uh, I'm gonna mess around with that all right so uh, this is what I came up with I don't even have to scroll to see everything um, I put a little serial guy in there just just so I could see it just so I could test it um, yeah yeah I did the little little header why not if I meet that threshold set the LED pin out I did keep that I lied earlier Let's see what that looks like. Sorry I'm doing it this way, but uh, seemed easy enough. So I ran that code, and as you can see, the, the numbers on the serial it outputs are, are decently uh, shooting out here. So if I talk fairly close to it, numbers should have went up or down. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. The hardest part was not the actual coding, as I'm sure most of you are, are familiar with. The hardest part was visualizing what uh, how, how this was getting written to your to your shift registry, and what what it ends up doing is like it talked out here is the first set the zero one two, the first set is uh, goes into the second set register, but how it does it is it goes into the first shift register then you load this 345 which goes into the first shift register and as it's going in it pushes what used to be in that shift register to the sec but the harder part was visualizing what, what all this meant so I, I did a little something in Excel as I, as I was doing it I found that the red indicates which LED will turn on so apparently a zero turns it on and I only did this just to know what because if you look at the code here like the first one here four two one four two one sixty three fifteen one sixty three fifteen one so I so and that'll make it look like this when that's called essentially that's how I um I probably won't be able to make make this guy really available but it's it's just uh, if, if you look it's it's just adding I'll make the code available. Um, check my description for, for location. Alright, well, this is what it looks like when it's complete and in the code. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It suits my purposes pretty good. Um, well, that about wraps this up. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was informational. I am the ill informed human. Stay tuned for another installment. Maybe. If I think of something else to do.